Well, hello everyone and welcome back to some more Suzerain, where last episode we made the maybe faithful decision of rejecting all corruption. That's probably... that's gonna have consequences. Uh, Kassaro Kibner demands emergency to be called uh, because of political violence. Okay. Let's go to Circus's funeral. Of course, I'm going to the funeral. Dark clouds were looming over there. They looked daunting as our convoy started approaching the Century Old Cemetery. It took. It looked like it was going to rain. Certainly, fitting weather for a funeral. As expected, Bernard Circus's passing maintained its media attraction, and all of Sorland was paying attention the ceremony, especially to what I would say in my speech today. Sir, we have arrived. Raindrops were running down the car window when Serge opened my door and held an umbrella over my head. As soon as I got out, flashes from the cameras blinded me. It's okay, Serge, I'll hold my own umbrella. As you wish, sir. He handed me the umbrella and started waiting next to the car with his own. Peter and Carl exited from their own cars in the convoy, they made their way over to me. Anton. Mr. President, I just wanted to inform you that the perimeter is clear and secure completely. There is one uh, there is no one getting in or out without our knowledge. Good work, thank you, Carl. Carl Baldi said with respect. Good. If anything happens to Anton, you will have to answer to the First Lady. And trust me, Carl, you don't want that. Peter let out a laugh, which drew some attention from bereaved antennas. Lower your fucking voice. You're right, sorry. I start, it started to rain. Several unintelligible voices were heard from Carl's radio. He stepped out to reply and returned shortly. We have a small problem, sir. A few, five to be exact, Red Youth members are here to attend the funeral. They apparently said they wish to pay their respects to their fallen comrade. Should we let them in? Do you think they pose a security threat? No, they were thoroughly searched. It looks like they were really here to attend the funeral. Let them in, then. As you command. Let's head over. They are about to start. We walked toward the crowd circle around the grave. Everyone in attendance was wearing black in mourning. The rain started pouring heavily. Bernard's widow and daughter were in the front row, staring at the coffin with a mixture of disbelief, confusion, and above all, a cold, unforgiving sadness. Both of their eyes were very red and swollen from weeping. Before taking my place to observe the ceremony, I gave my condolences to Bernard's wife and his daughter, who looked at me. She reminded me of Diana. When the religious ceremony was done, I was invited by the priest to deliver my speech. I took the podium, I felt like I had a lump in my throat. I couldn't get the daughter's eyes out of my head. Today we are mourning Bernard Circus, a father, a husband, and a loyal servant of this country. Towards the back of the crowd, I spotted the members of the Red Youth, wearing red shirts and black bands of mourning on their arms. They seemed they seemed ruly and were respectfully bowing their heads. There was complete silence except for the sound of raindrops. Could I be as overtly communist? It's just, it's just a funeral speech. Uh, he was a true comrade and he fought for what he believed in. His ideal vision of Sorland in every step of his life. We must learn from him.
brukar säga skott till Unity, maybe yeah, Circus had a dream of a unified Swordland. In this next month, we will need to fulfill his dream and band together. Ah, this is very, very provocative. Um, sure, escape. We must unite against the evil of this world. Hatred begets hatred. There is only one way to overcome this vicious cycle. We must unite against the evil of this world. I would, I would now like to recite one of the poems he left us. Uh, does that die fighting? They did not... Okay, let's, let's go with this one. They did not let us sing our songs. They are afraid. Afraid of the dawn. They are afraid of hope, but our songs will be sung. Moment of silence, please. Let's stretch this out. <laughs> During the silence, all that was heard were the railings. Some entities started clapping, some crying. I said, moment of silence. The coughing was lowered into the grave by the gravekeepers. After a couple of minutes, Bernard's circus was with the soil. No more. As we bid farewell to Bernard, I went to close with the words, every sword lives by a Morgana Westcore. Everyone replied, Vector Sizda. With applauses, I stepped down from the podium. It was time to leave. The widow thanked me with a soft and defeated voice before we dispersed. On my way back to the car, I couldn't get the eyes of Bernard's daughter, nor the following voice of his wife, out of my head. Would Diana, Monica and Frank look the same way if something happened to me? Perry put his hand on my shoulder. That was a good speech. I sense only respect from his voice. Thank you. I mean it. Even though you are a fuck-up fighter, I, I, I do like you. I know you do. Come on, it's time to go. We've got work to do. He was right. We had work to do, so much more to do. I realized that the rain had stopped and I looked up. The black clouds slowly dispersed and sunbeams enlightened our surroundings. As someone said, even the darkest night will end in the sun will rise. Hope was still in our in on the horizon, was still on the horizon. Collection item. Give me collection item. Uh never mind. Okay, as the media started lambasting us. Not yet. President starts turns together with Red Youth. Fuck's sake. Risky highway project, rumors of an infrastructure project, protest clearly. Employment and checks. The whole construction one, number one. The wrong economy. Fuck's sake. Getting lambasted by the media again. Plus calls for corporate responsibility in Narbel. Fantastic. Okay, seems a little bit more pro stimulus checks. From Mercosis Consulate.
Okay. Let's get back to it. The Blue Mansion and Lasha even hosted us for the important diplomacy gathering. The door opened and David Wishy, one, uh, once a lecturer to me, now the Minister of Foreign Affairs, gently made his way toward my desk. May I sit down, Mr. President? Leave the formalities aside, David. Please take a seat. All right, Anton. I'm used to titles, diplomacy jobs. Train oneself. He slowly sat down, taking care not to aggravate the arthritis in his knees. He'd always had an air of gravitas about him, and old age had only served to deepen that. After he settled himself, he regarded me with delight, his blue eyes sparkling. Look at you, Anton, the fourth president of Sorland. What a privilege for me. I still remember the first day you took my class at the Lashaven School of Economics. Somehow, the inexplicable ebb and flow of life has led us here, to positions where we can change the course of history. Uh, it's our opportunity to shape the future, and we'll, we'll do precisely that. We've got a little doggy, that's all. Let's be, let's be full modest. Our work surely contributed, everybody made sacrifices on some level. I'm looking forward to present you with the latest bill I am working on. The TCPA has turned out to be an initiative that can significantly boost our tourism and cultural industry. This untapped value would help us internationally to promote our position. I am convinced it can also help improve our economic conditions after discussions with Minister Hole and Manjit. The GNA and USB factions are supportive too. I really shouldn't have done overtime hours to get it done, but I really care for the position and value of our culture. He started coughing again. This time for longer. Would you like some tea or water? Oh yes, please. Tea and water sounds nice. Thank you very much. He smiled. Olivia brought two cups of tea along with a glass of water and placed them on the table. It seems you still remember how much I like tea. Nowadays it really does wonders for my throat. Um, how, how is your health, David? I haven't had any big complications except the usual. After that heart attack earlier this year. The health complications aren't a hindrance to my work, of course, but thanks for asking. How is the Wing family? Uh, Frank never liked the spotlight, that hasn't changed. As time passes, I realize that more family is the most important thing in life. We must take care of them. Door opened, Yosef and Lancian. Uh, Yosef and Lancian. Uh, joins us for the briefing as the tall case and Lucian for some for some reason I was remembering Yosef's last name and reading it instead of Lucian uh, joined us for the briefing as tall case clock hit the hour mark Peter however was missing I wondered if he was late from all the drinking he did at the party in Latshaven We'll talk more, President Rain. Welcome, everyone. How was your travel to Lachaven? A little bumpy due to some turbulence, I arrived via the military cargo plane that landed at Lachaven International. I took the train, it was a little slow, but I can still recommend it for the beautiful landscape. I also had the possibility to work on a couple of things during the ride. Well then, since Mr. Vectum doesn't seem to be coming today, I think we are ready to start. I will start by providing a brief overview of our current status with our neighbors. What would you like to start with? Let's start with Agnolium. Our brotherly nation to our northeast, Agnolia, they are still diplomatically non-aligned and probably has our uh, has one of the most democratic systems uh, between our neighbors. Economic stagnation is uh, is a worry for them. Their primary issue is their heavy reliance on foreign investment from us. Ignolia is our most friendly neighbor. We have been allies for the longest time after Rumberg and Next Dom. This 
impact needs to be part of the occasion. Unsurprisingly, the Agnolian Prime Minister Martin Van Horten is expected is expecting better cooperation through a new fairer trade deal with us. It was once uh, it was one of his election mandates. Uh, a more comprehensive trade deal sounds beneficial to all sides. Both sides could gain from it, but Agnolio has more to win than us. They want to protect their weaker industries, which we are profiting from selling our goods to. Additionally, the latest numbers indicate that currently a million Agno Sornus citizens live in the Agnan region of Sorland. Which creates a link between foreign policy and our internal affairs. These people have suffered socio-economically, which led them to crime and other problems. In addition, a relaxed immigration policy was one of Agnolia's main requests, which is unacceptable. Most of the migrants in our country haven't even assimilated into Sorda's culture, adding more won't help. Shut the fuck up, Yosef. I'm supportive of a relaxed immigration. I would rethink the matter seriously, because it has great influence in our society and values. We should remember that we promised to keep our immigration laws relaxed in the election campaign. Let's talk more about Valkland. Our cousins of old across the Markham Sea wish to have good relations with us. As we all know, Valkland is a socialist republic aligned with United Pontana. They are an important regional player. It's also the most significant sea power in almost all Merkaba. It is the only country that has that can rival the superpowers of their navy. We have hostile relations with them after several uh, wars in the 19th century, uh, which we wouldn't want to experience again. Recently, the relationship has warmed, uh, thanks to Emmerich Engel. As a result, diplomatic talks can be conducted in the future. Uh, yeah, breaking the ice with Falkland could be good if you are to rise dipl uh, diplomatically. I agree, they could be potential allies in my opinion. The situation in the region necessitates that we find allies. They haven't been in good standing with us for the past 200 years. Recently, they have also joined the Communist Montana Security Pact, subjugating themselves to United Montana. On top of that, territorial issues have been flaring up between Agnolia and Vogsland between the Helioland Islands. The Swordish Navy is very concerned with this volatile situation. Lucian looked slightly worried. Unfortunately, billions of Swordish Rhine worth of cargo is transported close to Valkland maritime borders on the Marken Sea and the Grey Strait. This causes significant risks to our imports and exports in the case of deterioration in our relationships. Yeah, the Strait is of high strategic value to us. Yes, so if the Navy is keeping an eye on the situation from a distance, right? We are actively monitoring the sea routes and cargo ships. For now, there is no in immediate threat. But we don't know what can happen in the future. What about Velen? It's tumultuous in the south as always. Victor Smolak is expanding his powers among prote protests from Vezek people. However, he is quite pos uh, positive about the normalization of relationships between our countries. Despite purging their Vesa communists, reports indicate that they have been uh, warming up to Kantan and international aid. As you know, Valen's stability was always a concern for the region. But if you want to help them, we must not treat refugees like we did in the 30s. I still can't stomach the inhumanity those people suffered. Trade agreement would improve mutual stability and increase mutual trade. I mean, I don't really want to cozy up to Valen because I want to aid the, the bloods. There would be many bargaining chips discussed, but Valen could be a new partner in the region. We would also invest in stability there. Our main goal should be to avoid a refugee crisis like the late 20s. That civil war had major security and economic repercussions on Sorge's soil. One of the demands of President Smolak is to tighten our immigration laws so that political refugees don't escape to Sorland. There has been a recent purge that many 
that pushed many villagers to flee to Burgia. It is definitely troubling. Dumran Outpost has regained its importance due to this. I'm sure you would remember that winter at the Border Outpost, Mr. President. He was right. I did remember that winter. I remember how cold it was when I let the refugees slip through. I was discharged of my duties as a result by Major Yosef Lancia. No less, spending the rest of my service cleaning toilets and sleeping in a cell. In fact, there have been a similar refugee situation in the past. Even Mr. President himself chose to disobey direct orders from his commanding officer at the time. I did what was right. You made me slip in a prison cell for it, I'll never forget it. But I did what was right. Soldiers do not decide on what is right. Soldiers do what they are told to do. He opened his mouth to continue, but David cut him. Uh, cut him. Our focus should be on the current matters. The Bloodish minority is very large inside Velen too, which is a factor to consider. It is in our national interest to prevent the formation of a failed state in our western border. Velen has been increasingly aligning itself toward the Communist Alliance, another point to analyze. Let's move on. Two important neighboring countries remain, Lesbia and Rumberg, which we'd like to hear from first. Let's start with Lesbia. Our southern neighbor aligning itself more and more with, the, our, with Arcasia. Lesbia is currently led by Prime Minister Patricio Alvarez. They are the jewel of the continent and the second largest economy in Mercopa. Though wealthy, Lesbia suffers from excessive economic inequality. Our past relations have been great, but during the last decade, their investments to southern dwindled due to our instability. Uh, what should we go with? I mean, yes, it could be beneficial. Aligning with the rich regional nation could be beneficial. It could be, but it would also mean that we would draw closer to the Arcasia bloc and near the Arcasian Treaty Organization. I am certain that the recession has a lot to do with their reaction to the retraction of investments. Once they see that money isn't in the picture, they vanish rather quickly because they aren't capital. They are capitalists. Uh, they have shown a selfish attitude during the violent civil war by closing their borders and funneling refugees to cross into Sortland. Lucian cleared his throat. No, the capitalism of Lesbia is not inspirational to me. Our values are too different, it will be hard to see eye to eye. I completely agree. Lesbia has for a long time benefited from us through our old tariffs. They are after exploitation. There are hundreds of very privileged oligarchs who invest inside and outside of Lesbia. Some made significant business investments in the cities of Manfi and Valgen. What's the situation with Rumberg? Now the most troublesome nation, Rumberg, a constitutional monarchy led by Queen Beatrice Livingston. I highly advise caution and calculated action against Rumberg. Our military must be prepared. The threat is real. They are strong and we have motiv the motivation and have the motivation as well as the means to damage us. We shouldn't give them any any reasons to pursue aggression. Uh, we must prevent them from interfering in our affairs. They have shown similar behavior to their neighboring countries but uh, before, but we must be cautious. While Thornburg openly denies such claims, their past and current actions make it clear that they want to destabilize us. The weapons caches found by our intelligence agency clearly shows that their goal is. Our military must be steadfast and our diplomacy violent. Yosef looks stern and full of resolve. Uh, yeah, the, Rum the Rumberg threat is one of our top priorities, you can be assured of that. We are always in dialogue with our Rumberg ambassador. What Rumberg ambassador? They closed the fucking consulate! Well, they closed the consulate, not the embassy. Assuming they have both. 
uh, ambassador to make sure the channel is open to us all. Or our amb or do you mean our ambassador to Rumber? That would make more sense. Uh, to make sure the channel is always open to solve this speech, we could use their aggressive attitude against them by convincing the international community. Lucian grabbed the latch of Times newspaper and put his finger on the article about the latest diplomatic incident. Their abrupt announcement about the closure of the Rumberg Consulate in Latshaven is yet another step in their escalation. This covers the overview of the current situation, we will move on to our trade choice and the response from Berg's diplomatic escalation. The sun began to set over the hills surrounding Latshaven. The team was ready to give advice on the new trade initiative and the response to the latest diplomatic incident with Rumberg. Better arrived late, he looked like a he looked a little rougher than usual, it must have been the drinking from last night. Fuck's sake, better what the fuck are you doing? Hey there folks, excuse my delay, I'm sure I didn't miss anything we didn't already know. Still supposed to be a part of this meeting an hour ago. Punctuality is important, we are talking about serious subjects here. You have a point, Peter, we should have discipline in the cabinet. Excuse me, it won't happen again. Lucian and Yosef looked at Spider before David moved away from the subject. The Vice President will be part of the trade delegation, so it will be great to have his input on that subject as well as on the Rumberg incident. Rumberg Consul Sir Brian Harrington announced the closure of the 120-year-old consulate. Now their diplomatic staff is leaving the city to go back to Thornburg. He blamed the lack of security in Stormland due to the assassination and subsequent protests, but it is obvious that they are making excuses. Bastards. First they closed their consulate and then they blame our security. Uh, their concerns could be January, but this reaction is... Uh, the security situation is under control. No, it is not. Their concerns could be genuine, but this reaction is unnecessary. Agreed. Other diplomatic missions have worked with our security units to increase their protection and staff on, of staff and buildings. The neglect of President Alfonso and the chaos of the elections delayed our diplomatic efforts. Now there are only two Rumberg diplomatic missions left in Sorland. One is the consulate in there, and the other is the embassy in Holsort. Okay, they, they do have uh, an embassy. Um... We are accustomed to their usual rhetoric, but this is far more serious. They are playing with fire. Look at what the uh, Velen destabilization has done to the region. Sardon blinking apart would tear Mercopa apart. In my entire career, I have never seen our Rumberg relations suffer this much. The previous low point was the annexation of Dom. Josef Mancia was furious. He barely kept himself from slamming the desk. There are worrying developments like the smuggled arms and the build-up near the border. Our military must be uh, buffed up to stand against a great power like Rumberg. We either respond to this aggressive act with the diplomatic condemnation, or we retaliate by closing our consulate in Dom. I want to say that an escalation would be risky this early in our presidency. We should focus on creating a negative image of Rumberg in the international scene. The people of Sorland must be protected no matter the cost, I say we respond equally. Um, no, we, we can use the consulate. Write an official diplomatic response condemning this unreasonable act, declared that Rumberg aims to stabilize Sorland and the region. As you wish, Mr. President, I shall begin work by immediately informing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Swaying the international stage is key in long-term strategy. I wish we had reacted more strongly. If we don't confront them, they will keep escalating the situation. And if we take the bait, they will invade us. I, on the other hand, am glad we are talking, uh, taking the more cautious road. There are three trade-related topics to address today. Which topics should we tackle first? None of them, because that is the end for, of this episode. Thank you all very much for watching please do remember to like comment and subscribe as always i have been Pope, and i will see you all next time